the Thoughty Orty podcast. Women uh, and, and people of backgrounds that are not white, I think, are more likely to be misdiagnosed. <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More likely I, to be misdiagnosed than undiagnosed. I definitely agree with you. Um, being Asian myself, and a woman, um, I... Yeah, I agree. I think it's also because women are much better at masking or I don't know if they're Mm. better. They just feel like they should mask. I don't know because I definitely did mask a lot in my youth if I look back because I I didn't know how I was supposed to act. (laughs) I had no clue. So I used to just pick up on um, other people's behaviours and tone of voice and the way that they would interact so that I could fit in and I actually think that is another part of like why autistic people are more prone to mental health conditions because we're like expected to fit into like this mold um like everyone else um and I I always like think of it and describe it as like being neurodivergent in a world that's like designed for neurotypicals so Mm -hmm. it's really just I don't know how we're supposed to be comfortable enough to be ourselves in a place that doesn't make us feel able to be so yeah and it is quite it's quite a protective thing isn't it because you know that there, there, there are situations particularly in secondary school or high school over in the u.s that present a lot of real world dangers or real world stresses like bullying and you know if you kind of stick out and people notice that and people sort of take advantage of you, perhaps not understanding um, like the, the the higher cognitive, like social situations that are going on, then they do take advantage of you. So there is like that aspect to it, even in the workplace, I would say. I know for me, I didn't really used to mask very much, but I, I definitely used to have some like mirroring like behaviors so i (laughs) there'd been lots of situations when i was younger and i was introduced to someone from like a different part of the uk like scotland and i'd start just naturally mimicking their accent and obviously they were like oh what's happening there and the parents are like looking and asking why is why is your child doing this for me it was it was a way of relating to that person making them feel like they're, they're, they're safer to be around me but I, I understand like looking back on it that it's not ideal and I, and to be honest even within my podcast if if you kind of look back at the different guests that I have on the way that I interact with people the way that I speak like the tonality of my voice it tends to very much mimic the person that I'm talking to and it's not like a natural process it's not like I'm thinking right I need to do this and this it's just kind of like a learnt thing. I don't know, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? And masking, I think just in general, can have some really bad effects on uh your identity as a person. It can feel very hard to feel like you're being genuine. It can take a really big toll on your like overall energy. It can really yeah. make you look more anxious and aware and paranoid in social situations. It's something that I only really started to to do when I was in my early twenties. I started to like realize that the people around me they were having a much better time in terms of making friends, forming groups at university, um, and also finding a partner. And those those things were were areas of my life that I wanted to work on quite a lot of, at that age. And it started to like mimic and mask and copy people online who seem to to have that life to them, to have that aspect of their personality to make those friends. But when I did, it always just felt very false and it didn't feel like I was connecting deeply with other people, which I think is another really big aspect of mental health, that social element. I agree with you completely. Um, I definitely personally experienced this like feeling of I didn't know who I was and I didn't know who I was supposed to be. So I used to constantly like wonder what my identity was. Um, sure. And I, I think that identity is like always evolving anyway. 
but there is definitely some parts of yourself that are more solid and I just didn't know because I was constantly presenting as typical I guess (laughs) yeah yeah Um, like passing passing as neurotypical yeah and I was really good at it but now Mm -hmm. Um, and it was so tiring. It was so tiring. I used to be exhausted um, after the end of the day, like after school, in secondary school. Um, and then also in the workplace as well, like you mentioned, um, mm. I experienced a lot of stigma um, yeah. in the workplace, which made me feel really unsafe because the reasonable adjustments that were supposed to be put in place weren't put in place <laughs> instead oh I was just yeah instead I was meant to just and those are like bare you know, bones as well anyway like. exactly <laughs> so I was really like worried and anxious and stressed every time I went to work but I've been mm. trying to educate the workplace um on autism and neurodivergence mm. so that they can be more understanding and accommodating of people's needs 